What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Alvin Online video. In this video, I want to share the top five beginner free to play money making methods. These are the five things that I've chosen to share with you guys on a beginner level on how to make some silver. So there's still a bunch more ways to make silver. You pretty much can make silver doing any activity in the game. But these are the top five things that I have recognized that have helped me level a couple accounts from the beginning just from free to play. So these are the top five. So starting at number five, we got faction flagging. Now the reason I put number five as faction flagging is because there's not a specific activity that you need to do to be able to make some silver while you're faction flagging. So what is faction flagging? Anytime you are in a city, there will be a faction for that city. So if you're in Limhurst, there's the Limhurst faction or whatever, any other city, except Carleon. Carleon does not have a faction. What you would do is you would walk up to the faction guy ask to be enlisted with the faction and then what you would do is you would go out and do any kind of activity in the game and while you do some activities in the game you'll be getting some faction points these faction points are used to level up your faction standing and once you start leveling up your faction standing you're able to purchase some really cool stuff from that faction merchant such as the specific city crest for the cape and also some uh, i think depends there's like a heart for each city that you use for crafting like for example limher we have the tree hearts and then you also have one amount one specific amount for that city so i think in limhurst we have i'm actually not quite sure i can't remember from limhurst but every single city has a different amount that you can purchase so what you can do is you can faction flag go out in the world do any activity that you get some frame from then you'll be getting some uh faction points by doing those activities and then wasting your faction points back at the faction merchant to uh, pretty much purchase anything from that merchants and then sell it off in the Carleon market. Now there are some things that you need to be aware of when you're faction flagging and I'll have a link in the description to a wiki article which explains everything you need to know but basically if you're out there in the world even in a blue and yellow zone there is a pvp aspect when you're faction flagged especially against uh, other enemy factions so if there's someone from the Limhurst faction and someone from the Fort Sterling faction there could be a pvp conflict when you're out there in the world yes even in blue and yellow zones so you need to keep this in mind once again there's There'll be a link in the description to a wiki article if you want to read everything about faction flagging. Moving down to number four, we got treasure sites. A lot of people like talking about treasure hunting and that's completely different. Treasure sites are designated areas where treasure spawns every 30 minutes. You guys have probably seen them throughout the world. And what you can do is every 30 minutes, there'll be a treasure that spawns in the middle of the site. You go in there, you open it, there'll be a bunch of goodies for you. But the thing is that area is designated for PVP so people can come in and can you know start attacking you and stuff. But the cool thing about these treasure sites is that they're surrounded by silver drops as well as little coffins that if you destroy they drop even more silver so you can easily go around the treasure site you know picking up all the silver killing the coffins that drops more silver and the other cool thing about these treasure sites is that every once in a while you're going to come across a statue when you attack the statue uh, it gets to a certain like hp then this huge like ghost comes out and starts attacking you if you kill that ghost it will have a chance of first of all dropping a bunch of silver i think between three thousand and like 7,000 silver depending on what zone you're choosing to do this in and it also drops your bag and in that bag it can drop something like runes or some cool item that you can sell in the marketplace so that's what I like to call the treasure sites and a lot of new players might be uh, looking forward to doing this because it's it, yeah you still have a little risk because you are in a pvp area but as soon as you see someone that's tagged up you can easily leave uh, these treasure sites spawn pretty much from blue zones yellow zones red zones black zones so yes it might be a a little bit difficult when you're starting off because people might come in and try to pvp you but you just gotta keep in mind that every 30 minutes those treasure spawns so after 30 minutes if you don't want to do any pvp aspect just leave the area wait for everyone to start fighting for the treasure and then come back and keep picking up all the silvers Moving down to number three, we got fishing. Fishing is one of the most misunderestimated professions in the game. A lot of people just think of it as the odd one of the gathering professions. But as a beginner, fishing is one of the best things you can do to start building your silver. So first of all, fishing, you start off as tier three. So you get to skip the tier one and tier two grind. You start off tier three. That means you can start fishing tier three and tier four fish. The other cool thing about fishing is that you can pretty much fish 
anywhere in the game as long as there's water so you can easily go to any water pool in the game throw your rod in there and you'll automatically start getting some fish so that's the other cool aspect about fishing the fishing the fish that you get uh usually sell between 200 silver to like 500 silver from tier 3 and tier 4 fish uh so it's pretty good you catch a fish you automatically you know kind of have those 200 to 500 silver for just one fish so as you can see it's very very profitable especially when you start reaching the higher ends of fishing there are some fish that would easily sell between 40,000 silver to a hundred thousand silver in a marketplace once you start getting to that tier 7 fishing I always suggest new players into the game to start leveling up their fishing because first of all it's a fun activity and it's just a good and fun way to make some silver especially in the early game Moving down to number two, we got merchant running. This is where it starts getting a little bit difficult with the silver making methods. Merchant running is something that's very simple on paper, but once you get to the practical side, it could be a little bit difficult. The basis of merchant running is going to one city, looking for an item or a resource that's selling for a lower price, then buying a bunch, a whole bulk of that item or that resource, then transporting it through the, you know, the royal continent into to another city where that item is being sold for a higher price so a lot of people do do this the difficult part about doing this is first you need to find out a good item that is selling for a lower price in one city and a higher price in another city there are some resources like Albion Online 2D that help you out with the prices on every city but the other difficult part about the merchants running is that you do have to travel those resources through red zones unless you want to take the long route and you find a way to go all the way around the royal continent on blue zones but a lot of people usually go through the middle of the royal continent and especially if you want to get to Caerleon, Caerleon is the best marketplace in the game and the only way to get to Caerleon, you usually have to pass at least two red zones so it might be a little bit dangerous because there might be a bunch of people who are ganking that location so that is the other difficult part about merchant running but once you get the hang out of it once you know what item is selling for what in what city you can easily implement this in your money making methods and people make upwards of millions of silver every couple hours uh, because they dedicate themselves on merchants running trying to trade different resources in different cities because there's always going to be a demand for one resource in another city that you know there's not a lot of for example let's say in Limhurst uh, there's not a lot of mining so some of the ores might sell for a higher price in Limhurst than something like in Fort Sterling uh, so if you want to take advantage of that, that is called the merchants running. I have a whole video explaining how to actually do this method. I'll also have a link in the description if you want to actually watch the whole entire video. So that is the merchants running. Moving down to number one, we of course have gathering. This probably was the most expected one of the whole entire list. Everyone says gathering is the most profitable profession to do and that is there for a reason because gathering is the most profitable profession you can do in the game. It's very simple to do. It only starts getting a little bit difficult once you start going into the red and black zones but just at the beginning of the game when you're in a blue or a yellow zone Gathering is pretty much the easiest thing you can do in this list. You just grab your ox, grab your gathering gear, grab your tool, and you head off to a blue zone or a yellow zone and start gathering all of the resources. Coming back, either refining the resources, if you want to level up your refining, or selling the raw resources in the marketplace. Sometimes it is more profitable to sell the raw resources than the refined resources. So you get to watch the market for something like that. Uh, so it's very easy you can easily implement it and especially once you start getting to the red zones and black zones gathering just just skyrockets the jump from tier 4 to tier 5 gathering is one of the biggest jumps in the game a tier 4 like resource might sell for like 200 to 300 per resource and then once you start getting to tier 5 which is just one tier jump you're going to start selling those resources for a thousand a thousand five hundred silver in that marketplace i could sit here and do a whole 10 minute video explaining to you why gathering is the most profitable thing to do 
But before we end off this video, I do want to talk about two other ways you can make silver. They're not in the list because some people might not like doing them or it takes some time. But the first of them is investing in gold. Albion Online has its own gold currency market where people trade gold and silver. Sometimes the gold price skyrockets and people make thousands and thousands of silvers. It's a super easy method to do. All you do is you buy gold at a super low silver price. You wait for that gold to go higher in the silver price and then you sell it. A lot of people like messing around with this market. It's kind of similar to a real life currency exchange because there are graphs that you can look at uh, and there are times where you know silver prices or gold prices drop depending on like news. If there's a new update, a lot of people might start buying gold. That drives the price up. That's when a lot of people start selling their gold that make a bunch of silver. There's a whole other system to it, but that is the other thing you can do to start making some silver which is investing in gold the final thing i want to talk about in this video is black market flipping if you have been watching my channel for a very long time you have probably noticed that i really like black market flipping because it's the easiest and safest thing you can do in the game to make silver there's pretty much no risk at all you're safe inside a city so there's no risk of pvp or anything uh, so it's one of the best ways to make silver a lot of people make millions and millions of silver each and every single day so if you want to watch more about black market flipping i will also have a link in the description to a video one video is explaining how you can do the black market flipping and the other video is how the black market actually works so with that being said i really hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys learned something if you're new to the game use any of these methods you will easily be able to make a couple thousand silver each and every single hour so you can either start saving up for your premium or you can start buying that item piece or that mount that you really really want with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys later on my next video peace